Hello and welcome to this another tutorial on Z test and T tests. Now let us have a look at this question first. And in fact, before we have a look at this question, let us recall what was our that tiny little table about sample size. Sample size large and sample size small then in small variance of population known not known this is a very simple chart and by large I mean n is more than 30 by small I mean n is less than 30 Now if you remember this chart, here I go for Z test, here I go for Z test, here I go for T test. This is our basic chart, reference chart. Now let us have a look at this question. What is this question saying? A sample of 400 male students, a sample of 400 male students. So immediately it should strike to us that sample size is 400. Is it large or small? It qualifies at large. So definitely I am going in this branch. A sample of 400 male students is found to have a mean height of 67.47 inches. Sample is found to have a mean height of 67.47. So my X bar is 67.47. What is X bar? Sample mean. What is N? Sample size. So if you read it, our sample mean is already given. Our sample size is already given. Can it reasonably regarded as a sample from a large population with a mean height of 67.39? Can it reasonably be regarded as a sample from a large population? Large population with the mean height of 6 and 67.39 so height mean height of my population is 67.39 what is this this is hypothesized mean or population mean so they are calling it population mean so this becomes my hypothesized mean and standard deviation large population with mean this and standard deviation this so another measure that I get over here is standard deviation which is 1.3 inches test at 5% level of significance alpha is given as 5% now let me mark certain things n 400 x bar 67.47 mu 67.39 standard deviation 1.3 alpha 5% and test is z can i go ahead and find value of z z is equal to x bar minus hypothesized mean upon standard deviation upon root n in this case it becomes x bar 67.47 minus 67.39 upon standard deviation of 1.3 divided by under root of 400 giving me 0 0.08 divided by 1.3 upon under root of 400 would give me 20 giving me 0 0.08 this 20 can go up this becomes 1.3 if you further solve it you'll get z practical is equal to z practical or at times we can even call it z observed or z observed okay you can call it either ways z practical how much is it we get 
1.6 upon 1.3 or as 1.25. Remember, this is an important value. This is Z practical. Now let me find out Z theoretical. What about Z theoretical? What is the question? Can it be reasonably regarded as a sample from large population from this, this, this? Now, does this question anywhere mention about increase or decrease in mean? I don't think so. There is no such word which is indicating that the mean has increased or decreased. So, in absence of any such measure as mean has increased or decreased, what do we call it? We call it a non-directional hypothesis because it is lacking a direction. Now, because it is non-directional hypothesis, it will be having tails on both sides. And level of significance is 5%. So, 5% gets divided into two sides. So, it will become 2.5% and this side becomes 2.5%. And most important thing that I am interested in is how much is this? Because the table for Z is giving me this value. How much is this? This remains 47.5% or 0.475. Remember again, this is 50%. This is 2.5. So this has to be 47.5. So in table, I should check Z score for area 0.475. Here is our table. Z score. Z score for this is my Z score for table value of 0.475. Where is 0.475? Let me check. Here is 0.475. What is the Z? 1.96. So I get Z theoretical value to be. 1.96 1 1.96 1.96 So what will be my final analysis? As Z practical which is 1.23 is less than Z theoretical therefore Null hypothesis is accepted and that is there is no difference or rather instead of writing it as no difference, we'll call it there is no significant difference in sample and population mean. This is my submission for the analysis in given details. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.